Good. Is anyone here, who's uh, first timer at One Million Cups this morning? One, two. Great. Thank you for coming. I wanted to reiterate what the purpose of One Million Cups is. One Million Cups is an initiative from the Kauffman Foundation, and it's nationwide. I checked last night. We actually have, there's 73 chapters around the U.S., and or, I don't know if we're called chapters or not, but this is happening at 73 locations right now. All right, 9 o'clock every Wednesday. And the purpose is to provide a platform and an opportunity for business owners and startups to present their business, to help hone their presentation skills. And there are a lot of reasons for them to do that, whether it's to, to uh, you know, lure in, lure in, that's not a good word, but to try to get partners or funding, things of that nature, just to present their business. So that's what we do. And then secondly, we want to expand that with you know, connecting each entrepreneur with resources that we have access to because we've got... You know, there's more connections with more people in the room. So we want to help network and help get uh, people connected with resources. Well, I want to introduce our first speaker, and I've already mentioned Hobie has been one of our most faithful One Million Cups attendees. Hobie Hare, come on up here, yeah. has his business, it's called Your Life Nature. And he's been chomping at the bits to present his business since day one, literally. I think you were one of the first applications that we had to speak. And so I'm glad to introduce you and give you the opportunity today okay. Thank to you. tell us about Your Life Nature. Thanks. All right. You bet. Great. Okay. Well, my name is Hobie Hare. Mm -hmm. My company is Your Life Nature. And through my company, I'm all about helping people connect more deeply with the natural world and with their own nature to improve their lives. And I want to walk you through an experience of what that might feel and look like first. So first, just take a good look around this room and ask yourself quietly, is there a lot of nature in this room besides our human nature? Probably not really. We've got four walls, we've got a couple of doors, six windows, eight windows, excuse me, looking out onto more walls, right? <laughs> any plants in this room? Don't see any. How about pictures of nature, picture of the environment, anywhere? Sure. Behind, okay, yeah? <laughs> Behind you guys over there too. So we've got a little bit of nature in this room, but what I want to do is walk you through an experience of what it might be like to bring more nature into your workplace or into your workspace every day. So first, if I can please get you to put down your coffee cups and to stand up for a second and just kind of stretch. Maybe you haven't even done that today yet. Okay, just kind of lean back, stretch your arms out, try not to hit your neighbor. Maybe yawn if you need to, and nothing wrong with that. And maybe take off an outer jacket and then just kind of leisurely stretch and sit back down. Maybe shake your arms a little bit as you're doing it. And sit back down and take a really deep breath. And please close your eyes. And I'd like you to imagine that there's this beautiful tree that you're really attracted to somewhere near your work or your home place. And take a minute and just think about what draws you to that tree. Is it its age? Is it its beauty? Is it its height? Or is there some other quality? Okay. Are you drawn to maybe its tranquility? its ability to put down roots wherever it is and thrive. Or maybe you envy its ability to not be upset about anything that happened yesterday or stress out about anything that's going to happen tomorrow. So take another minute and think about that tree and imagine that you've got all the time in the world. You can walk a little bit closer. You're going to sit next to that tree. The ground is pretty dry. It's really comfortable. There's a nice fall breeze coming through. You're feeling really, really relaxed. Your perception of time is slowing down dramatically. You don't have to do anything anytime soon except just chill and hang out with this tree. So let's take a few more breaths. And notice the colors of this tree, what it looks like at this time of year, what it might feel like if you were like putting your hand on that tree, just checking out the texture of the bark or the leaves what it might sound like, and anything else you might intuit or sense about this tree. And I invite you to come back whenever you're feeling stressed out in your daily life, whenever you're feeling really busy or you can't handle something going on in your family or some other urgent need, and know that you can come back and visit this tree at any time. And keep your eyes closed if you can. And know that you can visit this tree at any time of the day, any week of the year, any month, and any season. And if you come back and observe this tree and notice enough, you'll start to notice things that are really hard to recognize because there's always something happening with the tree underneath the surface or just inside. Something is getting it ready for that next season, that next day, that next opportunity. 
So take a few more minutes, excuse me, a few more breaths. And open your eyes when you feel ready. And as you can see and experience, Nature Connection is a really vital self-care tool. It helps people create more ease in their lives. It helps people experience a lot more productivity and effectiveness at work. It also helps people have a more powerful mindset that you can take with you anywhere in your business, in your life, in your relationships, in your home, in your family. Over half the world's population now lives in urban and suburban areas, so the need for this nature connection is even more vital. And that's where my business comes in, Your Life Nature. It's all about helping people who are busy, usually, who are entrepreneurs, mainly, connect with nature and have a healthy relationship with themselves so they can have greater life balance and so they can have more effectiveness, more flow, more peace in their lives. And also, I really help people create more time for themselves where they can have time for inspiration, for creativity. How many of you are parents of someone under the age of 18? Okay. How many of you would love to have more time for yourselves? Okay. How many kids would like more time for themselves? Okay. This is something you can teach and work with your kids as well. So the point here is just that um, there's many different ways that I work with people and the clients that I work with typically have similar challenges and similar desires. I want to start with the desires. Almost all my clients desire to have more meaning and more meaningful connection in their lives. Another thing they really want is to be able to prioritize better and to focus more. And that means getting rid of the clutter, the chaos, shortening those to-do lists. It involves all those different things. Also, my clients want to make a lasting impact and difference in the lives of people around them. And that's going to look different for, for many different people, but often the people that I'm working with are people who are really good at helping other people achieve their dreams, but they don't get around to achieving their own. And that's a real gift that we're all missing out on when they can't do that. And the ways that I work with people are through four different key ways. One is that when I come to work with people, I provide them that accountability and that safety net and that clear confidential space where we can work on what they want to work on. But with account without accountability and without any kind of support, you're not going to make big changes in your life. So think about the marathon runner. Is that person, is she going to be able to succeed if she just trains once a week, once a, one, you know, once a month, once a year? I help people develop that mindset that's so important to making any kind of lasting change. And I give people the power and the tools and the activities to help them do that on a daily basis. Another thing that I do is I provide people personalized tools, just like you experienced today, together with me. And we make them doable, we make them personal, we make them fun, easy to go to, and they're often pretty inexpensive too. And then another thing that I do is I provide people with something that they're often missing in their lives. I argue for their possibilities and not their limitations. Uh, the way I really work with people is through nature connection mentoring programs, and I also do a lot of uh, nature walks around town. This is once a month in Missoula. It's the third Wednesday of every month at 4 o'clock. It's a great way to kind of stretch and connect with nature and yourself. I also do a lot of landscape nature and photography and provide and create a lot of recordings such as nature connection meditations. What I just led you th through is something called a sit spot and I do a lot of sit spot recordings too to help people. Where I want to grow with my business is through more motivational keynote speaking. I also want to um, increase my opportunities to partner with local people to do retreats and workshops. There's someone in the audience today who has a cyber ranch that I'm beginning a partnership with, which is pretty powerful. And then um, also what I want to do is to create a series of educational books and motivational materials. They could be traditional books, they could be ebooks. I'm not sure yet, I'm just envisioning that now. But the big thing is I feel like I've got a great idea. I know it makes a difference. My background is, a, is as a park ranger in Yellowstone. And also I've been an outdoor educator, international educator for about 20 years. And this stuff works, it saves lives, it saved mine. And um, what I'd love to do today is just to open it up to questions after I'm done. But thank you for the time to present your life nature to you and the One Million Cups community. And I really appreciate your time and hope that you can make time to get out in nature today too. Thanks. Great. Yeah. Oh, well, can I get someone to take some notes for me for anyone asking me good questions? Get someone to jot down a couple of questions for me. Thank you very much. Okay. 
So, Hobie, I'm wondering if I decide that I want to enlist you and uh -huh. hire you as my nature mentor, uh -huh. what would a one-on-one -on -one relationship look like? What would be in that package? Maybe what are associated fees, mm -hmm. duration? Um, the concept all sounds great. Now what does it really look like in implementation? Right. What I do is first I have a no-obligation call with someone to kind of get a sense of what their vision is, what their needs are, where they get tripped up. And then I have a second no obligation call. And then they're looking at the program guide and what each program looks like and the fees and all that. And then we decide whether we want to partner together and if it's a good fit. So there's two no, no obligation calls up front. And it really depends on what level you kind of start with me. But because you might say, hey, I'm a good self starter. I don't need a lot of support, but I do need the consistency and the accountability. But all programs have. Um, hourly to 90 minute calls. Uh, they could be as often as twice a month with shorter check-in calls in between. A lot of fun homework and it's not stuff like it's going to feel like a chore, you're going to pull your hair out, it's going to be fun, personalized for you, things that you can do to get outside and connect with nature. You report back either through phone or through email and we also do some snail mail assignments where we're just creating things and sending them back and forth. And then for people living locally, we have in-person Nature Connection mentoring sessions uh, once a month for about two hours at a location really close to Missoula where I help you get better in touch with your own nature, plus you get to know this landscape very differently. And uh, that's sort of the short answer. Um, and then with people who work with me long distance, they can pay to work with me in person as well. That can be an add-on. But I do a lot of things that help people make transformations in North Carolina, New England, uh, where else? New Hampshire, Maryland, Virginia, all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Good. Yes. Have you thought about um, working with schools or um, group homes? Because I know, like in the news, you hear constantly how urban youth don't get an opportunity to connect with nature, and that could be a cool. My sense would be I'd prefer to work with educators and say counselors and people who are school professionals because then I can um, work with them, do some magic together and then turn them loose and then they can impact the people they're getting to know really well over the school year and then I can be a resource for those people. But yeah, certainly I'm open to that but I don't think I'd be um, going into every classroom. I'd rather work with the people who make the impact and get them out of their own element that I'd have. I'd be I'm open to it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Other question? Yeah. What inspired your idea? Uh, a couple different things. Um, I was a park ranger for a number of years in Yellowstone, and I've always had this passion for connecting people with nature. And even when I was teaching English to international students at Montana State, please don't boo. Uh, <laughs> I was always finding ways to get people out and connect them with Yellowstone and teach them how to behave well and safely in bear country. And then um, also when I started to come out as a gay man, I realized that nature was really saving my life day after day after day because it was the one place where um, nature didn't care who I was, who I loved, who I am. And I found tremendous strength and resilience in that. And I started thinking, okay, um, what is it about nature? How does it save and change lives? And I basically came up with a a four-step process in which that helps other people do the same thing. And your life doesn't have to be a mess in order for you to work with me, okay? Okay, 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 okay. That should go in your marketing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Any other questions here? Yeah. So I would love for you to talk a little bit about how you market your services and how customers find out about you. Okay. Um, some is through word of mouth, local ne networking. That's how I met Suzanne Miller in the audience today, through someone at MBN. Um, other ways are when I do um, like teleseminars or I've done some partner um, podcasts with people and usually there's some kind of offer or invitation at the end for people to have a free conversation or to receive a meditation, things like that. I've met a couple people become clients through their purchase of my landscape prints and they put them in their, wa in their market, sorry, in their wallets and all over the walls and around their businesses. Um, I'd say many different ways. Where I probably struggle the most is consistency in social media. Um, and then satisfied clients referring other people. Uh, let me think about this. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, mainly in person, I'd say. And then also through the uh, Nature Monthly Discovery Walks that I do every third Wednesday. Um, I promote that, and that's sort of like a toe dipper to get in at a lower entry point price where people can experience what I'm offering, and then they can decide from there down the road. But it's a pretty soft sell. Okay. Good. I may have missed this when you first talked about it. So is most of your... Most of the programming that you do or the work that you do with individuals or small groups, or do you ever do a large group, you know, maybe a seminar size or something? I mean, it mm -hmm. might inhibit connecting with nature if you have 100 people out there, but. Yeah, um, well, I've, I guide for a company out of Bozeman that I take people to national parks through and other areas around the, the country. And so I'm comfortable working with groups, you know, 20, 30, 40 people. You know, give me a group of people for a week. I can turn them on to nature and help them have better relationships with themselves and their communities. Uh, I enjoy working with people one-on-one -on -one because you can really make a huge difference and then that person can tailor their instruction and what they're receiving better. Um, I would like to do more public speaking, though, and more motivational and um, keynote speaking so I can reach more people and impact more people. So that's where I definitely want to move is reaching bigger groups. And when I was a park ranger years ago, I'd speak to as many as 650 people at a time. And that was fun. And yeah. how many buffaloes were in your audience? Oh, one time there were four. <laughs> yeah, there were three or four, yeah. Good, other questions? I'm not, I'll hog it up if you don't have questions. Yeah. So back, you mentioned uh, the potential of doing a book or an e-book and uh -huh. you hadn't decided. Have you gotten very far down that process? Was it, it, it seems to me that in this field, Establishing yourself as the expert mm -hmm. is is you know that giving yourself that positioning would be incredibly beneficial, so that people could would view it, you know, with a little more gravity. And publishing a book is a great way to do that, or mm -hmm. even an ebook. But mm -hmm. tell me how far you've gotten with that, or if you're just toying with the idea. Uh, toying with the idea, I've, couple, I've got a couple of ideas for a book concept. Uh, I've got a friend locally who has produced an ebook, and also I think a print book now through a series through a speaker that she follows, and I'd like to talk with her more about that. But um, right now I don't know too much about marketing books. I just know that I probably need to start writing it, pitching the idea, making sure it's clear, and then um, perhaps you know giving it to each person who comes to a speech or to a presentation or a conference mm -hmm. instead of selling it like that, just include it in the cost. Right. Yeah. yeah. That'd be good. With, um, when you said you do some teleseminars, Mm -hmm. And also your own podcasts and things like that. Do you are you able to coach someone through a connect with nature experience on a teleseminar or a webinar? I mean, even if they're not in nature, just like you did with us yes. a few minutes ago. Absolutely. You do that? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you do the teleseminars, is that something you set up or does somebody else set it up and, and bring you on board? Ideally it's someone else who is the tech guru, because I'm not. Uh, but I've done a couple in the past where someone else has pretty much masterminded all the tech and I just plug in. That's mm -hmm. ideal for me, because then I can focus on my brilliance and someone else can focus on theirs. Right, Yeah. Right. good. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> from, your, from the point of idea to concept and being active, what, what did that look like? Did you just drop everything and go with it, or what did that timeline look like? Oh, fits and starts. For a long time, I thought I could make a living just selling my photographs and my greeting cards. And well, I had a business coach about five years ago who said, when are you going to stop hiding behind your cards? I thought, oh, crap. You know, she <laughs> called me on my crap. But she was right. She said, you know, you're a really good teacher, a good educator. You help people, you know, connect with nature and themselves. What about doing something with that? So it took about three years from that initial kind of kick to coming up with an idea, and then I rolled out a couple of different nature mentoring packages, had three clients within you know, a couple of months, which was exciting, but it took a couple of years before I quit my day job. And um, I'd say the first year or two, it looked like my business income looked like a cardiogram, but now it's definitely going up. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. yeah. Do you have a website for all of your materials? And yes, I do. It's yourlifenature.com, and I've got business cards in the back I can give you. Yeah, but it's yourlifenature.com. Uh, this is less a question than an experience that I've been having with Hobie uh, that I think is really uh, important for where your business goes, Hobie. Um, I have this cyber branch, which I will be talking about in the future, and I've been doing a lot of experimenting with various ways of engaging people on the Internet and, and uh, using web cameras and, and a variety of other uh, kinds of media. 
And Hobie has come out uh, several times where we have done what we call on the porch swing interviews, which are uh, broadcast uh, from my ranch. And it's literally on a swing uh, overlooking the Bitterroot River. And he takes uh, internet um, watchers, viewers, through a, uh, the, the same kind of meditation that he just took you through. And uh, currently, uh, many of my clients are elderly. And uh, I really think that there's something um, that you have to offer to people who are elderly and who are in uh, uh, rest homes and assisted care places. Yeah. Um, the, the clients that we did reach were, were very taken with what you, where you took them. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, as you get older and infirm, uh, your ability to interact with nature is greatly diminished and yet it's a really a vital part to be able to connect to that part that was maybe very important to you as a young person. Yeah. And so I would encourage you to really move in that direction. I think that I would work with um, some rest homes here in Missoula mm -hmm. and, and really home in as to what would be an appropriate package because I think you could deliver that over the internet nationally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I just really encourage you. I really liked uh, on our website, um, Hobie came up with a, the, 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 the tagline, uh, connecting you with nature no matter where your feet are. Mm -hmm. And I think that that really says it all. I really would encourage you to take that direction. It's, I think it's really powerful. Thank you. Thanks. Good. I'm glad you brought that up. I was thinking about exactly that and wondering if you could package virtual mm -hmm. you know, your life nature packages sure. so that you people bet. anywhere could do it. If they can't get from you know inner city Detroit to the woods sure it, it's a you know it's a first step yeah and doing a you know having a video series or I mean that's a good way to have you I'm gonna back up a step when you first submitted your application one of the questions and some of the guidelines for 1 million cups and they're just guidelines was was asking is this business scalable mm -hmm. and we talked about it, it was like well is it just Hobie and one-on-one -on -one with people in the woods or one no. a small group no. how could he scale this business yeah. is it something that could go national yeah. or bigger. And there, you know, there are different ways to do that. You could train trainers, that, so you have mm -hmm. your people that teach others in other areas. But one of the, the possibly most effective ways, at least lowest barrier to entry, is to do it virtually and sure. online, like Cyber Ranch. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Do you, I'd like to hear your response to what she just mentioned. I love the idea, and I'd like to do it. Yeah. Go deeper. Well. Uh, <laughs> I think this will be our third broadcast tomorrow yeah. at Dunrobin, so I'll just kind of keep my eyes open to what people respond to and how I could create a package that could work for, say, the elderly, the aging, uh, maybe school administrators, school guidance counselors, school teachers, uh, students. Yeah, the, it's a pretty big universe out there. So, Right. Yeah, lots right. of applications. Is producing a book does, you know, it, it's still a hardbound book, even though it's just information that could uh -huh. be digital or anything else. Sure. It tends to have a little more weight. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, he really did a book, as opposed to he recorded a video. But the taking someone through a video process like that and, and giving them a picture paints a thousand a picture paints a thousand words. Did I do that right? How how many words is a video? A <laughs> okay. You can put it in a book or you can put it in video format and I think the impact would be quite a bit larger sure. with video so somebody can see what you're seeing and not Imagine it, you know, what's a tree look like, even though that has its place and is very powerful. Yeah, because I was thinking along those lines of doing something where people could practice their sensory development, where they could listen or they could just sense or feel or just imagine touching something or smelling or eating if it's, you know, something edible. But the idea is just to really develop the senses because that's really how we connect with nature. Sensory development is sort of like the gateway. Mm -hmm. And then good mentoring is the second step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I rather envisioned. Um, a series that, um, let's just say, a, a um, assisted care place could put on a closed circuit television for their uh, people late mm -hmm. in the evening when they're about to go to sleep, mm -hmm. where they, where you have uh, beautiful nature scenes yeah. and your voice taking people. So it's 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 a visual and a, an audio experience. Mm -hmm. It's not you talking to them, seeing seeing you, but seeing maybe a, a, a three minute video. Of, ha of closing their day with some sunsets 
and some, you know, some some sort of a, a, a nature connection. Mm -hmm. I think that would really be powerful in a in a hospital yeah. in an assisted care setting because I think, uh, you know, you do bring down people's uh, blood pressure. I mean, it's it's a really good way to transition, and I think you have a. You have a real talent for this. It, it needs to be packaged in a way that people can get at it. Sure, thank you. I think like um, it's really interesting listening to everyone who knows you well and has experienced your services. And um, as somebody who hasn't, it sounds like um, a cool opportunity for you. Um, and maybe, well, I'm sure we'll ask the One Million Cups question, but a cool opportunity would be pairing up, finding somebody in this community who can help you hone some of those packages and really help you sell them. Because it sounds like your specialty is much more practicing it and um, helping people. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm just listening to the blood pressure comment. And if there's somebody who can measure that for you while you're doing that, yeah. like, and then can package that and help you sell that, I think you've got, it sounds like an amazing opportunity. So I hope that you find like somebody in this community that can help you ex like um, showcase your specialty. Thank you, thank you for that, yeah. I, I hope you were taking deep mental notes on I was taking Lady deep mental notes because I think that's a, a <laughs> magnificent opportunity yeah. to connect the dots. Sure, I think you've already done a lot this morning, so thank you for that. Because what I was coming, my intention was after speaking today is just to have you ask a lot of questions so you can get to know me better and the business that I provide. So if you meet people or know people out there who are struggling with something in their lives, you'll think a nature connection is a way to help them make that change. So that's really the big thing, just how can I answer your questions so you get to know me better, the work that I do. Good. And then also I asked the other question, and thank you, Amanda, for writing down things for me. Yeah, what, who said the phrase, you don't have to be messed up to get help? Or yeah, you, how, you, how your life doesn't have to be a total mess for you to work with me or something like yeah. that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think okay. that's great. Okay. okay. New okay. tagline. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop our timer. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Coffee. Thanks. Good bye. Now I can drink some coffee. Good job. Yeah, now you can have coffee. Oh, and I'm sorry, here, grab it. Oh. Now you get your swag. You've earned your mug, mate. I'll take it. Awesome.